encourage people to come in. Who has ever heard of TPP before? I've just seen it posted. I haven't delved into it. What do you guys know about it? Because it's a pretty big document, so you can start broad or go yeah. more specific. It's All I know, well, I looked it up after you mentioned it, and I looked at and mostly what I read was more about NAFTA, mm -hmm. and there was something about companies consume countries oh, wow. that they don't. This is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boardroom. <laughs> they changed <laughs> some of the rights that the Mexicans had under the Constitution's work rights. Mm -hmm. And by having NAFTA, the NAFTA rules overrode the Mexican Constitution, which is backwards. And I think if money and companies can go across borders, people should be able to go across borders. So this, and NAFTA is a great um, place to start because what TPP is the first free trade agreement negotiated by the Obama administration. Um, and basically what a free trade agreement is, is an agreement between a group or one, two, or a group of countries that says here is how we're going to do business. The problem with free trade agreements is they are negotiated by administrations and there is very often um, no involvement between elected officials and the people with the free trade agreement negotiations. So we have no recourse. We can't say we don't like the Trans-Pacific Partnership and we cannot call our Congress people and say we do not want the United States of America to be part of the Trans-Pacific Partnership because it is directly negotiated between the Obama administration and the administration of each country that is involved. Um, with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it is currently being negotiated and thanks to some, um, some heavy risk-taking people who we cannot name, there have been leaks of the documents. So specific parts of the documents that are being negotiated from these meetings have come out. And um, the main ones that have come out are in regard to labor, environmental law, and intellectual property rights. Uh, so the agreement itself is an agreement between the Pacific Rim countries, um, China, Japan, Australia, uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, Chile, Peru, Argentina, Mexico, United States. And the agreement supersedes all U.S. environmental and labor laws. Uh, and basically what it is, is kind of an exchange. So the United States has said, per this agreement, if you are a country, one of those countries in this agreement, that you can use this agreement to subvert work around the laws of the United States. So if I am a Chinese company, a Chinese oil company, and I want to frack in the United States, and there is a ban on fracking in Buffalo, according to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it is okay to frack in Buffalo. And that supersedes the um, municipalities' laws. And the specific part of TPP that's very scary is that it also allows for, if the case is won by the corporation over the municipality, that the legal fees for that fight would be the responsibility of the municipality. So we could be paying for people to be fracking in our areas. Uh, so I'm going to read, um, Lori Wallach is a, um, the head of um, a group called Labor Watch, and she's been a big proponent in trying to get labor organizations to demand and protest against the Trans-Pacific Partnership, because it is, as you can tell, very secretive. Um, it, the first round of negotiations happened in Dallas about a month ago. Um, right before the uh, G8 NATO summit, and they were a meeting at the Dallas Convention Center of 600 corporate attorneys representing different corporations and the Obama administration. Um, so I'm just going to read the brief introduction that she wrote. It says, from leaked text and our work with international allies, we know that there are many reasons that the U.S. trade negotiators are not releasing text of the document. The Trans-Pacific Partnership has been termed NAFTA on steroids. Many of the provisions in the leaked text 
would benefit the 1% and leave the 99% in the cold. Investor state provisions would empower corporations to attack domestic laws in private tribunals and undermine our domestic laws that are put in place to protect consumers. These extreme foreign investor protections for corporations also promote offshoring of investment and jobs. Provisions in the Trans-Pacific Partnership would prohibit Buy America, Buy Local programs. From leaked text and intellectual property chapter, we have learned that pharmaceutical companies are pushing to dis decrease access to medicines by limiting production of generic drugs. Also included in the intellectual property chapter are harsh internet regulations that would encroach on privacy and also cause for internet service providers to police their users. We have also learned that the agreement would roll back safeguards that many nations have passed to restore financial stability. The AFL-CIO has also cited that it is concerned that the outline of labor rights of the labor rights chapter fails to mention the international labor organizations, fundamental labor standards, or even whether labor pro provisions would be enforceable. Um, so basically, as long as you agree to the terms of this agreement, then you don't have to follow any of the current existing rules. Um, so 600 corporate representatives have official role as trade advisors. Um, so they're the only people who can see the drafts of these. Members of Congress, journalists, and members of the rest of society have not been able to see this. Um, and I can only, the only congressperson that I know of who actually has said anything in regard to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, um, Rand Paul and Bernie Sanders. Usual session. <laughs> um, and basically they received this information through leaks the same way we did. So our own Congress has no idea. Obviously they have some idea, but they really what is going on here. Um, and I, honestly, uh, most people have said that, that these trade negotiations have been more secretive than the World Trade Organization's negotiations. Okay, okay can I just interject briefly? Yeah. What they do with these, they, they, um, they negotiate them in secret, but ultimately they have to be voted on by uh, Congress, but they're only allowed to vote up or down. They're not allowed to modify it. So whatever form it comes to them, they can't, uh, they can't affect the form of the agreement. Okay, um, and the, the biggest thing to me about this is that this is not a free trade agreement. It really has very, very little to do with trade. Uh, so the U.S. has trade agreements with four nations comprising of about 80% of the GDP for all of the countries. Um, and the U.S.'s job is to create and export opportunities um, that will deplete trading with certain countries while encouraging trading with, with others. Um, in the case of Vietnam, um, it is a lower cost manufacturing alternative to China. Um, so basically they are trying to transition what they did in NAFTA originally, which was pretty much pump U.S. jobs directly into China, and they're finding other countries that are willing to subject themselves to that for the influx of money. And then the back door is that they don't have to follow the labor standards. Um, or human rights standards or anything. Exactly. Um, so the TP, uh, obviously the biggest part of it that, that's really contentious is the uh, foreign investor rights, um, which is what really grants the power to the 1%. Um, so foreign investors, according to the TPP, are more important than U.S. citizens. And that's really the entire purpose of creating it. Um, so every one of the foreign investor rights that is outlined in the leak text goes directly against the rights of the American people. Um, so it's, ugh, I'm sorry. So foreign corporations are unable to challenge a country's law in private. Unaccountable tribunals, um, they're specific to this agreement. So it's not like when, you know, we sue the fracking company, um, you know, we go to the courthouse. There is a specific tribunal that is set. Uh, obviously, um, the Obama administration is going to be the ones who are arranging for the logistics of the tribunal, uh, which allow for the, the deck to be stacked against oh, the people. I brought my chair. Oh, she's back. Oh, okay. Is that one? Great. Excellent. I, I can't work. catch it very well. <laughs> about trade. It's about 
anti-labor and jobs. Um, another big portion of it that has been very contentious, people who are aware of it, is related to the pharmaceutical industry and higher drug prices. So um, a lot of the leaked documents have showed that distributing proposals put forth by the United States are at the bidding of pharmaceutical corporations, and that's, you know, status quo per the Obama administration and Obamacare. Yeah. Um, so the current U.S. proposals would roll back modest reforms on drug patents made by the Bush administration. Pharmaceutical companies would be empowered to extend the life of patents for medications, even if they provide no new benefits to the patients. Um, so Tylenol pills were under, were under a patent right now. Or, I'm sorry, if Tylenol pills were under a patent right now, drug companies could extend their patent if they made it into a capsule or liquid form. Um, same drug. Same well, exact same drug. Would they um, still have the patent on the on the original form? Yes. So they can they can extend the patent based on creating new product lines, which is obviously oh, great for corporations. <laughs> yeah, right. And it goes directly against the current American policy. Wow. But again, it's the free trade agreement over um, the wishes of the people. Because well, that's reason. Right. Um, so the U.S. negotiators would also establish new rights for pharmaceutical firms to attack drug formularies, um, which are cost-saving programs that are used by Medicaid, Medicare, VA, um, and other, and in our country and other countries. Um, they would undermine access to life-saving medicines in poor countries by increasing the overall cost of these medications because of the increase in the patents and the inability of generic forms of these medications to be created. Um, so basically, it, it's, it's a way to slowly erode the entire industry that creates generic medicines, which is, you know, how a lot of people afford to stay alive um, because they cannot afford, you know, the name brand Big Pharma medications. Again, has nothing to do with trade. So this is, this is I, I missed the beginning, so this is the, uh, the pact that they want to call the, the, uh, uh, the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. I mean, all over the Pacific and the rest of the world. Yes. Um, <laughs> so again, you know, um, it would increase, um, obviously increase all drug prices around the world um, just because of limiting the ability of people who make generic drugs to do business uh, in the United States. What does that mean for the insurance companies? Exactly. It, means, it means a higher profit margin for anybody, you know, whatever, whatever the cost is higher. It's, it's just a higher profit margin sure for anybody. And it. again, you know, just the lack of, of representation for the people who are, you know, going through the things that create these kind of sicknesses. Why should other com countries um, take part in it? Well, the, the reason, honestly, there is, to me, in looking at it, there is no reason for any country that wants to truly represent the best interests of its people to be a part of it. But again, it's being negotiated by administrations and um, these foreign trade advisors. Um, so, I mean, for the corporations, for the uh, infrastructure of the country, for the people who run the country, there's every reason to. Um, it gives them an inroad to, to use their country to get to the United States. So there's going to be money from the 600 corporations that have come together to try to work this out with the Obama administration, it is advantageous to them because if they can go into one of these countries, um, like Vietnam, um, that is impoverished um, and use a base in Vietnam to do things in the United States because Vietnam is part of the agreement. So as being part of the agreement, if you build a factory in Vietnam and you have your base in Vietnam, then you can do things in the United States with um, your labor force. Um, that would be illegal according to international labor laws and uh, in illegal according to the laws of both states. So this, this I, I guess because I'm late, I messed up, but I mean the, the, the idea is that the all these other countries are going to have free access to American markets um, and the people in those countries are going to have the free access or basically these corporations can afford to right. do import exports. So if you start, if you have a corporation and you make a subsidiary that is in Vietnam, you can build a giant factory that uh, pays workers pennies on the dollar, very similar to, to China, and then you can expand on that by bringing whatever those policies are based on your company being based in Vietnam into the United States. And then you can also, um, you know, 
say it's an oil company and they have a refinery in, in Vietnam, then now you can frack in the United States despite the fact that there are bans on fracking in a local municipality because the free trade agreement supersedes like the municipality. Gap. Like gap, right? yeah. yeah. Wow. So this completely... Yeah. General agreement on tariffs and trades and it's something... Who did that involve? Well, that involved saying that there are... No, who did it involve? I know it was who? the United States. I know Mexico was in it. I don't know how many other countries. This but preceded NAFTA, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. And basically, they, they if the company doesn't like the law about selling things in, in a state or in, the, or in a country, like in the United States. All I know is the, the uh, dolphin safe tuna symbol. It used to mean something, but then some Mexican, Mexican company took it to GATT and said, well, it's not fair, it looks the same. So therefore you can't, you can't sell it based on the fact that the dolphins haven't been killed using, using this fishing technique. Oh. And so that symbol doesn't mean anything anymore. Ew. Yeah, away. local so, ordinances will be will be uh, superseded, as you said, by yeah, the law. Yeah, so so basically, so. it's like what they're all all the right wing is complaining about one world government without right. saying it's one world government. Right. And it's yeah. And and specifically in this, that that the provision, um, the legal provisions are addressed in TPP tribunals. I forgot what the exact name for right. them is, but they have a separate tribunal that is not. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the deck is obviously going to be stacked against the people in these tribunals in a way that it wouldn't be, um, you know, if it was more open. Um, so even the name um, tribunal is like it just gives implications of like the sort of multinational corporate star chamber, you know, and it's frightening. That's what it is. Exactly. And, and also, um, you know, I mean, there's, there's a tacit agreement between all of these corporations that they will invest in, you know, the representation to defend the precedence of TPP. You know what I mean? So if, if you if you win a case against TPP, then obviously that leads to you know a hole in the system that they've created. Um, so most of the representatives are you know international business attorneys that are you know really writing this very specifically to be indefensible. Or mm. other way around. I'm sorry, miss miss said that. Yeah. But um, it know, cannot like, be litigated litigated in a. In a, right. a normal sense. Right. <laughs> it can't be like, like the Supreme Court can say anything. Right. So, I mean, if you look at just the trade agreement side of it, since NAFTA and on um, joining the WTO, we've lost five million man over five million manufacturing jobs. Uh, you know, one in four, um, 42,000 manufacturing facilities have closed. Um, you know, obviously wages have, have fallen. Um, you know, they're, they're saying that because of displaced manufacturing jobs, even when the person who was had a manufacturing job can get back into the workforce you know they're making between eight and nine thousand uh, dollars less and those are for the people who have actually been re-employed um, and which has really destroyed the tax base for school funding and you know pretty much everything it's it's, it's just precipitated um, you know what we're seeing today and the difference between you know 80s 90s and, and what we see today in our economy so, um, so are they gonna have their own police force um, Sounds like what that's what's next. Because I mean, if the United, if well, I mean, they're <laughs> the people who have put this to together be. own our police force. So I don't think that they're going to need to make another one. I'm, I'm yeah, they, <laughs> they use the one they already have. The ones they already have, and, and when those don't work, they'll use the Department of Homeland Security, which is just corporate police. And of course, the private security fund. Um, Firms. Firms, sorry, yeah, uh, such as uh, Boldy Former Zay Blackwater are always uh, lining up for contracts. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, yesterday I went to the, the Nate's trial mm -hmm. and they're showing a video. Just This cop decided to arrest him. He wouldn't leave off it. I mean, he was arresting him for trespassing. He trespassed around 10 minutes and it took a guy like a lot more. Well, a lot, anyhow, it took the guy a long time to find Nate to get, run him down and he was calling for backup support. One of his backup support had an anti-terrorist lo logo on his back of his clothes. <laughs> I mean, they're sending. <laughs> the it makes Department of Overkill. <laughs> yeah, Department of Overkill. I mean, this is just stupid. But I mean, I could see uh, them defending fracking sites easily. You know. Okay, maybe this is this is a, a, a digression, but um, the World Trade Organization works a lot like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of wondering, and maybe, like I said, 
w why would there be a need for a separate agreement? Why wouldn't all these countries just be rolled into the World Trade Organization? Well, I think specifically it's, it's going with the model of China and trying to take impoverished Asian countries and turn them into U.S. manufacturing centers. Um, but yeah, that's, they're really doing that. I mean, I don't understand. Well, yeah. and this, this specific agreement, I would say, is more specific and detailed. Um, so I'm gonna, not quite done with some of the things that that it entails. But. So I, I had thought that the Asian company the countries were doing an agreement among themselves that wasn't going to include the U.S. And I was wondering if, if this was was that. I also noticed that China is not mentioned in the flyer as being right. part of this. They have China and Mexico have recently joined the negotiations. So these flyers are made before the negotiations okay. started. Um, China and Mexico have recently been added, and basically there's there's kind of a momentum now um, where more and more countries want to be a part of it because you know the people at the top see the monetary and political benefit for them. Okay. First of all, I'm sorry for being late. Mm -hmm. I hope I didn't miss too much. Right. Um, the strategic question I was wondering about from looking at some of the literature that you posted mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of continuous with this like, this question, because it seems, strikes me that this fits into um, an overall strategy, strategic strategy of the United States basically competing militarily mm -hmm. with China, mm -hmm. anticipating China as being the number two power in the world. So um, the way I see that is, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of, they're already um, localized attempts to free trade between, um, you know, geographic neighbors, um, the EU and NATO. So it looks like what we're doing is we're trying to um, insert ourselves into the Pacific Rim in a way that goes against what we might call natural geopolitics. Right. Um, like, for example, we're also building up our military posture so that we're more committed now to, to the um, that their side of the Pacific. Um, and that's sort of unprecedented. I mean, we already have a strong military posture around the Persian Gulf, but the other side of the Indian Ocean um, and East, you know, we only had a strong posture there when we were fighting wars there. So that's, you know, that's kind of an issue. Um, so this is like, it makes me think of um, fascism because there's a combination of military and government, I mean, and business. So we have, um, uh, on the one hand, a, a stronger, a more aggressive military posture vis-a-vis -vis China, and now there's a more aggressive uh, business model against China or, you know, a set of trade agreements. And I'm really curious about what you've been suggesting, that we offshore jobs um, for basically for international corporations mm -hmm. and they were able to get a cheaper labor market in China and in India in the 90s mm -hmm. and um, that's what uh, so that's a done deal mm -hmm. so you're suggesting that now that we've kind of exhausted what we can exploit from mm -hmm. the Chinese labor market well you've seen the benefit for yeah. those two countries yeah. obviously um, now we want to shift the exploitation to, to other countries, mm -hmm. yeah. countries that are their neighbors right which has got to piss them off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because right now their people are really angry because their country is devastated um, environmentally mm -hmm. and they're having really bad health effects and people are starting to not take the labor situation anymore. Mm -hmm. So now that they've soured that situation, it seems like they're going on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading that right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just that parasitic model of, you know, yeah. using all the resources and, and <laughs> you know, continuing to... Um, position yourselves in different places. Um, we throw around the word fascism a lot. Mm -hmm. Am I being logical to think of this as a, as, as a grand example of fascism? It, it is a no. A, a no. Okay. I'm not. I don't, I don't. No, I don't think it is fascism. Right. I mean, okay. properly understood. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's not one government. It's global. You know, geo geopolitical. It's regular geopolitics. Po po politics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, it's just I that agree. I agree. I think well, I think regular geopolitics is fascist. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, but there's such a strong coordination between our military strategy and our business strategy. It seems well, to within, me within within this this country. I mean, you can make a reasonably good, good case for uh, you know business running the, the the government, which and and using the uh, power of the media to 
run to kind of hype this hyper nationalism, and yeah, that's clearly fascism or incipient fascism. Um, you can't, I don't think, generalize that out to international relationships. There is no, I don't think there is an international model of fascism. Well, sure. I mean, and, and that's again, what the, that's I, what the Nazis attempted. I, well, no, they attempted to, to take over the world. That's a little well, yeah. international. <laughs> Who but, else is um, doing that? They, they, they allied themselves with Japan, um, Italy. largely because they needed to secure that region of the world. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm kind of like above my pay grade right now, but I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking that the use of fascism should be uh, should be you know limited to where it's clearly necessary as a definition of what's happening. I don't, definitely I don't think this. That's why I asked the question. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't sure if I was okay. being if I was being a little bit ahead of myself because <laughs> um, we do again we use the word very broadly uh, and I, you know, I I understand it has a more narrow historically precedented use, but it's you know the fact that. You know, this is the economic center, and now they're the chief military power besides us. You know, yeah, they are the next largest spender in the world on, on military hardware going forward. They're making the largest investments. So, uh, it, to put it in Cold War terms, you know, uh, they're the person who we're, we have to be prepared to fight the next war against. You know, and so if we start competing, as it were, in their backyard, that gives fodder for more military <coughs> spending and development of a, 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 a strategic posture where both of these powers will be ready to confront each other. Uh, just, you know. Yeah, but ex except for the, the fact that I think this is more economic than specifically military, and it's basically, well, yeah, we're trying to about, encroach uh, in, the Iraq their, war. in their back. But I, I think that <clears throat> part of what the United States model is is to use economic attacks as a military tool. Um, I, it, it, I mean, it's it's all kind of a, a cycle, and you can say. I mean, you know, it's what's happening in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Right, which is really most Americans don't realize the extent to which we are engaged in military operations in Africa, and the extent to which we've increased our military posture there. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't realize that, yeah. but it all follows business. It all you look at where you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Well, we should also bring back the old question of like a private security firms like assisting these corporations and enforcement of these rules, which are beyond, you know, national jurisdiction as well. Okay, so so the the Chinese are very heavily investing in Africa. Yes, right, right. They're yes. trying to they're trying to uh, make sure they have a source mm -hmm. of the raw materials that they need, and then so clearly there's a, you know, like we're trying to you know have a like a piece of what's going on. But I think you've got the, 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 the economic and military thing backwards. The, the military, I think, is used when necessary to intimidate or to uh, enable the economic takeover. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, you know, you do trade with us and, you know, if you get too out of hand, right. you know, we've got the, the, the carrier battle group out here. Mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of relationship. Um, there are two points. Well, the main reason I wanted to talk about this is because, because it encompasses, um, you know, so many aspects of society. I think it's a good point of of really showing um, the 99% 1% dynamic, because this is a 1% document. It's being administrated in a 1% fashion, and it can affect things that directly affect individuals. So the raising of the price of the cost of medicine. Um, the fact that you know there are going to be oil international oil companies trying to come in and, and frack land where people have put bans on on fracking. Um, also, intellectual property rights. I don't know if you guys have read a lot about um, PIPA and SOPA, but they are virtually copied and pasted into the document. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So like it doesn't like so we can stop SOPA, we can do stop CISPA, but then as the free trade agreement, then corporations can say, well, hey, corporations that are based out of these countries, um, we're just we're just going with the free trade agreement. It has nothing to do with this specific congressional bill that was put forward. Um, so intellectual property provisions, um, internet service providers would have to monitor and report individuals who violate copyright infringement. In order to monitor this activity, internet users would be under greater scrutiny, and this would give way to you know, obviously privacy concerns. So they would be required to monitor you to see 
if you were using copyrighted material. Um, obviously, that you know violates all of our privacy. Um, and people who violate so a violation of copyright protections could be burning one CD, and that violation. Um, <coughs> Even if there is no problem, like you don't have to prove. Like generally in these cases, you have to prove that the reason that you were that you were burning these CDs was to generate a profit. You know, so they'll get bootleggers that have you know a thousand DVDs of something. Uh, according to the the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, if you burn a CD or DVD and give it to a friend, you know, you are still in viol in criminal violation of copyright laws. Um, well, time to bring out the tape recorder. Right. Hmm. <laughs> um, so, I mean, basically, it, it requires for the criminalization of, you know, sharing of information. Um, mm. Or act, I wouldn't say that's maybe an overstatement, but the ability for companies to, to go after individuals for things as little as burning a CD and giving it to your friend. Um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to discuss this, because, again, like, that's something that you can talk to regular everyday people about. They might not, you know, say, oh, I understand free trade agreements, yeah, the dynamics yeah. of, of international global politics, but I understand that um, my, my emails are going to be read and that I can be arrested for burning a CD. I understand that, you know, my, my grandma's medicine is going to be going up. You know what I mean? So uh, I understand, and, and in the labor world, you know, all the unions that we deal with, okay. when you talk about a free trade agreement that completely in, ignores all international labor laws, you know, that's, that's something that resonates. Um, and, and then the final element that I want to speak about um, before we just go into total discussion is financial regulations. Um, so according to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, there is no such thing. Um, so oh, cool. <laughs> basically all of the work that goes into preventing things like credit default swaps, um, what we call capital controls, um, are unable to be implemented against banks that function under the... the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, so what we are working for is financial regulation, more jobs, um, you know, environmental laws. These are, these are all the things that we're pushing for. Mm -hmm. And this one single document is, is a point for me where we can try to raise people's level of consciousness as far as um, how all-encompassing and um, truly systemic a lot of these issues are. And how, again, they, they come from the top, and um, the people at the top, for their own personal benefit, are creating these documents specifically to go against what we are working toward. And um, I'm hoping that the more people can educate themselves about this in whatever area that they care more about, that, that whatever area that is, that you can pick that, and it's, it's an outreach opportunity. Um, because of how all-encompassing it is. And I think that a lot of the things that we like to talk about, like corporate person and all these ideas, are just very hard for people to take a grasp on. But because of how all-encompassing this specific document is, I think that it's a great outreach opportunity and I hope that, you know, whatever, I think that there's an element in all of these lists of things that, that is gonna resonate with just about everybody. And if we can pick on that and find a way to harp on that, then we can really get people educated about it so that when it does come to that up or down vote, as Eric was talking about, that we have a group of people who already know what's going on and say no, you know, so and respond. Because they're going to say yes. We know the they're going to say yes. Um, that's, we don't know. So everything that comes out of this is just leaked documents. It's just somebody yeah, yeah. who was on an email, who got on the wrong email chain, and put something out on the internet. Yeah, um, so there's another round of negotiations that's going to be happening in um, Washington, D.C. at the end of July. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get as much attention drawn to the fact that negotiations are happening. Mm -hmm. Because this is something like, you know, I'm sure everybody in here, you know, surfs to blogs and, you know, kind of looks for a lot of that citizen journalism. And it's just something that you very, very rarely hear about unless you specifically go look for it. Mm -hmm. So I would like to kind of raise the level of consciousness about it. And I know that Occupy DC is going to be working on, you know, mm -hmm. actions to draw attention to it. I think Dallas did a good, as good a job as you can without having any kind of mainstream media help and without having true masses because it's, again, it's a difficult thing to address when it is not covered in any kind of media and none of the statements you make about it are validated. So right, right. the goal is to continue the discussion about it on an individual level, to write about it online, but to raise that level of consciousness so that once it does come to the upper 
down yes or no vote that we have a, a mass of people that's willing to do something about it or at least talk about it. So what is it going to do besides increase the price of medicine? Hold on a second. No, um, okay. No. Did you, could you make, because uh, you said you had a several points that you went through. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you just, because you're at the end of your talk now, right? right? Yeah. Is it possible to just review the main points sure. so mm -hmm. we can get the overall picture before we go into like a discussion? Okay. Um, so let me go back here. Okay. So the main points is this is <coughs> been called by most people in the world NAFTA on steroids. It is, <laughs> again, the goal is clear. It is 1% power. Um, the domestic is an attack on domestic environmental and labor laws. And in doing so, the regulation of those attacks is based on tribunals as opposed to, um, I don't know what the normal due process is for you know suing a corporation, um, but to have a specific tribunal. So it is literally corporate control of our recourse against it. Um, because again, they they control that. Do they do um, environmental and what else? What did I say? Domestic environmental. Yeah, do well, domestic Lab labor and environmental. Environmental laws and intellectual oh. property rights. Oh, and property rights. Intel oh, intellectual right. property oh, rights. Oh, right. All right. Let me. So this is a trade agreement. Right. Between countries around the Pacific Rim. Yes. So if we go around the Pacific Ocean, we're talking South America, <coughs> like Chile, oh, yeah. um, the me, United me, States. Let me find my list here. Um, it's like seven countries. Yeah, here's Mexico. Here's the one, the initial list, and then ah, okay, according great. to uh, uh, John, some latitude. Yes. New Zealand, um, Mexico, and US. Yeah, Australia. Now, China is not officially on board. But they <laughs> no, have, I imagine not. They're coming to the table now. They want to start uh, control it. Yeah. So the, when then, this was, I, I wrote all this up about a month and a half ago, but it's United States, Peru, Chile, New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, Brunei, Japan, Canada, Mexico, and China. Uh, China, Russia, and Indonesia have been a part of the negotiations, but not have overtly expressed the fact that they are going to agree with them, but basically they're kind of, kind of playing the periphery. And I think the fact that they're present shows their understanding of the relevance and impact it could have on their international relations. So Chile is the only South American? Um, Peru. Oh, Peru. right. But well, we're talking, you know, something like two-thirds of the Earth's population. Oh, yeah. It's plenty. Yeah. Just curious. I mean, if Indonesia and China are in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like So, China. really, China and Russia are the only ones that haven't just said, hey, we really want to do this. They're kind of at the table <laughs> observing. Uh, India is not a part of the Negotiations. Interesting. Right. Why not? We can make them part of the Indian Ocean. We could say it. <laughs> so they could say anything they want. <laughs> just, just back to the, 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 the talking points. Um, the recourse is tribunals, completely controlled. Um, the negotiators are corporate advisors, most of them corporate international business attorneys that represent 600 corporations. Um, on the American side, the only representation is the Obama administration. Um, and Congress um, has not been given access to any of the documents aside, aside from um, what's been leaked. Um, again, offshoring um, jobs to these countries by, subvert by working around the international labor laws. Um, the patent rights is really, and it goes to other things, but really the main focus that's going to resonate with people is talking about the elimination of the generic drug industry um, within these countries um, because of the ability to extend like a patent on Tylenol. If you have a pill and you make a gel tab, then you own the patent. And right now, anybody who you know is aware of, of the medical um, prescription drug world is, you know, Big Pharma puts it out and then they have a specific period of time where it's theirs and then you know then the generic comes in and the generic medicines are really how people survive how they stay healthy because most people have, cannot afford um, to have health care and cannot afford these kind of medicines it's cheaper when it's generic exactly um, so the elimination of, of that based on patent laws and obviously there are other implications but that is the one that's going to have the, the greatest effect um, the challenging of domestic laws, again, on the environmental side, mm -hmm. as far as fracking, as far as um, pretty much, you know, um, deforestation. Um, you know, they could 
conceivably, you know, cut down Yellowstone Park, and then we have a tribunal to see who was wrong, <laughs> you know. Um, and um, let me see where was that. And then going down the line is um, intellectual property rights. Um, so you know, criminalizing burning CDs, even if it's not for profit, even if you can't prove that there was, um, you know, any benefit. So, you know, I burn a CD, I give it to him. That's that, that's as criminalized as if I have, you know, obviously not directly as criminalized, um, but the same provisions can be made if I was selling them, as if I was just giving them to you. The requirement of the monitoring. Um, so the ISPs will be fined if they do not police themselves. So if, the, if you're an internet service provider and I download copyrighted material, then the, the heavy goes to the corporation. And in that fact, they are enabled to um, enact this policy to monitor all internet activity. And they're not enabled to, but they're required to in order to prevent uh, from copyrighted materials being downloaded. So they're, they're going to require ISPs to report anything that's downloaded they're, they're that has a copyright the, on it? Yes. So they're going to require the monitoring. So all your emails, everything that you do on the internet will be monitored. And then reporting is required, but it's also available. So, I mean, if they ask to see your emails, I'm sure they're not going to say, no, no, we respect your right to privacy, even though we've been watching you. Yeah, of course, it's uh, terrifying to see the implications for peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and such and twerting and oh, yeah. all that. It's just like it falls all under the same place. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then, obviously, um, banking regulation and, and capital control. Um, that you know any transactions between these countries would not be subject to capital controls, um, and banks involved would um, would be able to state that they are they are agreeing to the TPP, even though they're going against um, regulations created by individual countries to um, regul control capital. How would that affect uh, YouTube? Because YouTube looks. You know, well, YouTube is owned by Google, and YouTube right. is very different than it was even really? three or four months ago. Really? Like YouTube, well, I mean, you used to be able to watch full episodes of any show that had ever been out oh. on YouTube. Copyrighted material used to be all over YouTube. And well, it still is, though. I mean, it's well, just constantly it, going up and going down. Well, it's going up, it's going down. You have yeah. 15 minutes, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Yeah, well, two hours. But, but Google, Google owns the right to every right. single video on YouTube. And if they want to take it down, they can do whatever they want with it when you click that little accept box. So um, I don't think it's really going to affect YouTube any further than YouTube has already been, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't say ruined because yeah. it's still an amazing you know, yeah. tool to be able to watch a lot of videos, but compared to what it was when it first came out and before Google bought it, um, it's already eroded to the point where there's an ad you know, every five seconds. Oh, yeah. um, there was, um, and, and Jamie and Zadie and Sparky can attest to this, videos of protests are being removed. Oh, really? um, mm -hmm. you know, Luke We Are oh, Change so has, had his, um, has, has had his account shut down several times along with plenty of other occupations. Oh, really? So, I mean, YouTube censorship so, is already in, in full, not full effect, but. So, basically, we've got to switch to Vimeo and uh, what, live stream and, I mean, all those things play videos. Right. And there's more. The, there's, oh, there's, 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 a there's a whole bunch more, so YouTube I mean, could. YouTube is just very, it's just like Google, it's just very convenient. It's a way to oh, put I mean, it all together, but. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, people have to just start migrating to something where they can watch mm -hmm. what they want to watch. Yeah, but then they'll change that, too. Well, yeah, and it's a cat and mouse game, you know. The mouse is always running from the cat, you know. <laughs> I mean, they, they never stop, so. John, could you just explain the uh, corporate control of America part? Yeah. All right, so, I mean, basically, this is a way for the 600 corporations um, that negotiated with this, the Obama administration um, is an example of how corporations control America. You know, Barack Obama did not say, hey, Congress, uh, hey, business people all over the country that do international business, you know, come talk to me. Let's figure out a way to make international business work that makes America better. He said, I, 600 corporations, send your best attorneys. And he didn't say, we're gonna do this in Washington, we're gonna do the first round of these negotiations in Washington, D.C. He, there was you know, no news article, generally, you know, they, they send the Washington Post and all these things, write a news article, there's this negotiation. And whenever there's some r rhetoric about how something is going to actually improve America, whether it be true or not, you see it put everywhere. It's talked about um, you know, on the, 
the Sunday morning, you know, news shows. Um, so when you see the fact that they chose to start these negotiations the week before G8 and NATO, and <laughs> they did it in Dallas, and you even even the Dallas, there's only one Dallas news station that covered this. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Occupy Dallas, uh, I don't even think people in Dallas would have under, really understood what's going on. Mm -hmm. It shows you just how it started that you know this is direct corporate control of America and then when you look at the system of enforcement is really the biggest statement to the corporate control when you say we have an entire legal system that is designed to address these issues regardless of what you think of how they're addressed and we're going to create our own trade tribunals and I, for, I keep forgetting the, what the word that they used um, but the 600 people who the 600 corporate representatives who negotiated it have a position in these tribunals as trade advisors you know what I mean so it's again like that we regulate ourselves that these 600 people have control over what happens in our economy and the other economies of these countries yeah. when we don't because they're people right um, <laughs> and the fact that this was written specifically to empower corporations intellectual property we are not going to regulate the internet you know maybe the internet you know, well let's say we accept the premise that the internet needs to be regulated um, should you let an internet service provider regulate it and empower them to invade your privacy, or should there be some other means for that to happen? And so, by putting in the you know putting the power in the hands of the corporation is really um, how I see it as the the corporate control of America. The patent, yeah. you know, the corporation gets to extend the patent based on a fairly easy well, system. You just gotta you just gotta. What happens to people in Europe where they haven't signed on to it at all? Well, it doesn't, I mean, does it, it affect it, them? I mean, it doesn't directly affect them. It indirectly affects them yeah. because the trade is going to be centered around the countries that are part of this agreement. So they are able to do more than they are able to do in Europe. Um, <coughs> well, well, corporations are. I mean, in Europe, they would still be able to have uh, generic drugs then if yes. they don't sign on to well, it. Well, they would still be able to have generic. They would still be able to have generic drugs. Um, yeah. I mean, they, would, they wouldn't have the, be subject to these restrictions. How are they going to do that? Because the Internet is international. How do you, how do you limit it just to well, the countries the that signed it? So the ISPs that are based out of those countries would have to follow the agreement. Otherwise, they would be fined based on the agreement. So the ISPs so if that you're are an based in Europe wouldn't have to do right, that. Right, exactly. But then there's ACTA in Europe, so. ACTA? Yeah, <laughs> which is basically the same thing <laughs> but for Europe. What is that anyway? Uh, ACTA, I forget what the, it means, but it's basically you know the intellectual property rights argument, the empowerment of corporations to monitor and exchange all of our internet information um, with the government and to criminalize um, file sharing. Um, and I, for, I cannot remember what the acronym actually stands for. Okay. It's like anti counterfeiting something act. Hmm. Um. When talking to people out on the street about this, mm. um, I'm trying to come up with some things in my head on how to share it and personalize it and make it real to them. Um, <clears throat> one thing that's coming to mind is the drugs and the formularies and insurance and how taxpayers are going to have to foot the bill for that. Is that safe to assume? I don't think they're going to stop covering these medications. They're just going to demand more from the taxpayers for Medicare and Medicaid. And more money directed to Big Pharma because there's going to be, in the United States at least, not in mm -hmm. Europe, but in the United States, a smaller generic drug market because these patents, few, not right now, but further on, new drugs, their patents will be able to be more easily extended. The drug thing is the biggest thing for most people. Because so, most people take some kind of medicine. So you have people who are on medication, Everybody uses the internet. Yeah. A lot of most people, at this point, I would say a lot of people mm. understand the negative effect that NAFTA had on our economy. And to say that that is going to be furthered is something I think is a conversation starter. And then any of the other aspects can, mm. you know, lead to, you know, more specifically relating to that person's life. Well, oh, it seems to be like the jobs. I didn't. I can no longer talk about jobs. jobs, but NAFTA really sucked a lot of jobs out. This mm -hmm. seems like it would Just even more so because it brings in countries that are even countries more that we haven't exported jobs, jobs to yet. So. Right. I mean, it's going to mm -hmm. take the jobs out of China. I mean, how many jobs are left here? 
You know, there's no shoe industry in New York. There's no, there used to be pots and pans. The Revere wear used to be made in New York. I mean, how many things are made here anymore, you know? So basically, China's going to be really affected by this. Mm -hmm. And they've already... And, and maybe by the end of it, by the time it actually gets to the point where it's going to come to an up or down vote, China will, I mean, they've been monitoring. Yeah. So maybe they'll find some way to work themselves into it. Who, who knows? Well, they're, they're, I think they're trying to be more high end, you know. I think mm -hmm. that's what they're planning on trying to do. Um, you haven't spoken yet, sir. Do you have a comment, question? Maybe some other people who haven't heard from that? If you guys are going to talk more about you know, fascism, I, I want a definition of that. So that's that's one of my concerns. Fascism, from one, my understanding, is where the government works for the benefit of corporations. Yeah. And I would say... Mussolini said he, another yeah, better name for it might be corporatism. Yeah. Yeah. Can I that's my understanding? Yeah, you know, I know awful. Norm Chomsky has called it fascism. Mm -hmm. right. And our military has been in every Central American country for the benefit of corporations. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not oh. nothing new. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's the famous statement uh, from Eisenhower about how we ought to fear that we, that we should be concerned about the military-industrial complex. We should but, have done something. But a lot of people have made the argument that in, you know, the first decade of the 21st century, we saw a more um, definitive formation, fascist formation in America. You know, so, yes, there have been elements in our culture that we could say are fascist for a while. I mean, McCarthy, that was a pretty fascist thing happen. Um, but it just seems like this is another stage. Uh, what I was reading it as is another stage in a development towards you know, the greater the greater fascist formation. That we're more firmly fascist now. Yes. Corporations have more control over our mm -hmm. government now than it used to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's almost where, where our vote almost doesn't count. Almost. So so the narrow <laughs> the narrow definition of Fascism. I mean, I don't have an internet connection here. I've just oh. been typing onto our. Uh, the pa it's askers on what the password is for member. If you want the internet. Um, yeah, but um, but I was so yeah. I could look up, or you could probably do it faster. Look up the definition of fascism. Yeah, that's what that's your question. Um, but yeah, while corp while the combination of the government and corporates corporations is central to it, a very important part of it is a rise of nationalism and a greater militariz militarization of the society. So that's what I was sort of pointing to in the comments about. And one more thing, it seems like a lot of Republicans, you know, like they don't want our government to be subject to international tribunals for right. this and that. Things. Yeah, yeah. Boy, you think they, they'd be against, you uh -huh. know, ceding our power to world right. contracts. Good point, yeah. I mean, it just seems like it's counterintuitive. You think the Republicans would be raising hell about this? Oh. Well, it's more like a business-friendly yeah, one-world government, too. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Really they stand for what they're paid to stand for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you pay me, I'll do it. <laughs> no, they don't that's, that's a good point, though. When we get into the strategies of how we deal yeah. with this yeah. and popularize it, I think that's a good point to make. Mm -hmm. like, the, uh, yeah. the surrender the of uh, domestic uh, domestic uh, control to outside organizations, uh, and, and indeed, I think it resonates with a lot of people. Especially some of them Paul may be kind of supporters. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, So I, I guess um, I was hoping. I, I don't know if anybody else has any questions, but maybe we could try to formulate, um, you know, some strategies, or maybe we can work on some sort of. Um, flyer a way that we can start discussing it and you know trying to strategically think about who we can reach out to that would be immediately against this and kind of develop a coalition to to try to push this because I really believe that you know if all the work that we could do in between now and when this passes is, is meaningless if if there isn't a movement against this agreement. Um, one thought is just to pose the question why isn't this an election issue? Mm -hmm. you know, why isn't this something <laughs> yeah, that why don't they talk about is it? talked about? Mm -hmm. um, but 
I mean, I guess there's too easy an answer, um, which is it's not a political it's not issue. issue. <laughs> right. Both yeah. of the candidates will, are, will, will, are locked step behind it. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. Both of the candidates. It's so sad <laughs> to even say. Yeah, it's like, it's more than Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Yeah. How long do we have before we can expect this to pass? <laughs> um, no, that's that's, that's, that's unknown. It's impossible to know because the negotiations are not done yet. And again, all of these, th and again, it could be even worse because again, all of this research is based on about 60 pages of leaked documents. Wow. Um, and looking at free trade agreements, it could be 500 pages long. Like we don't, we still don't yeah. know. Yeah, NAFTA was thousands. Exactly. So we have 60 pages of leaked documents, conversations, you know, rumors, stuff like that, um, independent journalism research, but we still don't have a good idea of what's actually in there. And that's what's really scary to me about it, because, you know, maybe we've heard the worst, but maybe we haven't. <laughs> Could this be construed as conspiracy theorism? What we're doing or what they're doing? <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing, because I'm so tired of oh. people saying, "Oh, well, that's a conspiracy theory." Well, it's a fact that they did they have TP negotiations. Money. It's a fact that they have, you know, people have confirmed that the leaked texts were part of negotiations. Again, they can't be confirmed that that's actually what they're going to do because they haven't made the document up yet. But mm -hmm. um, it's it's kind of verifiable that that this exists at least. Do, do, do so, these so. websites have the leaked documents? Um, yes, and I can, if everybody wants to write down their email address, um, I have PDFs for all the leaked documents if uh, anybody you wants to around too. them. Uh, I, I, did every, I think everybody got one. Did everyone got one? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm going to say to mention this, but the, the logical people that would be involved with this would be the unions mm -hmm. in this country, and do we know anything about when, whether they are aware and, yeah. when, and the working AFL on this? The funny thing is the AFL-CIO has made statements about it. Um, I talked to Angela Blue, she had no idea what it was. Uh, right. I was hoping that Bill Nowak and Roger Cook would come here today, so I've sent mm -hmm. them information, but yeah. they were completely unaware of it. So I'm yeah. assuming that on it, like, the higher ups do, but that most people don't, mm -hmm. even, you know. I just found out when you told me, and I play around on the internet a lot. I've been off that's, for the last week, that's mostly. That's the reason why I wanted to have this discussion, yeah. because mm -hmm. it's, like, you have to go digging for stuff, and I'm really glad they put out the TPP Watch and TPP 2012. Oh, They'll just get put up in the past uh, three or four weeks. But How about getting Democracy Now! to cover it? They may already have, but we'll have to check. I don't know. I, don't, I watch it pretty regularly, and I haven't seen no, anything I haven't seen it. Um, I don't know how, it, uh, they have, like, I guess, email them? And I don't know. I mean, the Facebook page. I think they're monitoring the Facebook page. Yeah, you can go directly to their website. Okay. Oh, they have an input thing now? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't used to, but I think they're starting to realize it. Stuff they so don't know. I was just reading through this. So they're saying, like, if this was adopted, it would prevent them from labeling foods for gen genetically modified. Probably, probably. Uh -huh. They could pass that law that's, in California, that's, that's, and it that's completely. Something, and again, this. That's something that's, again, rumored to be out there. Mm -hmm. But there hasn't been an actual leaked document mm -hmm. that you could confirm a statement from. But again, I'm sure that GMO crops are going to well, be part know, of more things coming on. Sure. I mean, it just there makes there me want to just say, we could always just break rules. We could always just say, I don't even want to use all this stuff anymore. I just well, want to like, what? I just want to like make our own culture here in Buffalo, not worry about anybody else. Like oh, in right. Buffalo, right <laughs> here. Know. We're no, using gasoline. We're using. Like we should be able to do that. Electricity. Mm, we're sure. using a lot of things that come in here. It would be nice. Like, it would well, be nice. it accept. comes in from outside. Yeah. You know, Maybe, I mean, our efforts. Why, why accept? Like, why accept a change in the law so you could fight against it? I don't want to accept that change. Right. right. We shouldn't have that change. So it hasn't changed yet, but it just feels like we're like little fleas on the back of this huge elephant. You know, well, when we come in here, have these meetings. But we're all fleas and they're elephants, right. so like yeah. I think as a group, you know, <laughs> irritation. Yeah. 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 But, I'm sorry, Eric was. <laughs> okay, so it, it it seems like the stage that we're at now is the idea of getting the word out that that this is coming, that mm -hmm. this is in the works. Right. I liked the way you phrased it as. Uh, NAFTA on steroids because a lot of people know about NAFTA mm -hmm. that transfers then and I think maybe that's starting to be all we can do mm -hmm. is, is get out okay this is coming mm -hmm. be very afraid here are the sources and then we, we keep hitting that over and over again and get uh, more aware, general awareness mm -hmm. and again I think the um, 
uh, the unions and whoever needs to needs to be aware that we're aware that this is is happening. Now, one of the questions I did have though is the, the, the websites on the flyer are all um, uh, New Zealand. Is, right. is there something in the United States that is actually also yes? I um, mean, not that I did have anything yeah, against these, New Zealand. But. No, um, they just were kind of like. They're much more politically active than we are, so there was yeah, a lot more resources. Um, we went earlier into the... You know, right. The um, but there's a website that's not on here. It's called tpp2012.com, um, and that is run by... Um, what is the name of the organization? Hold on. Um, there's Tipsy Tuesday. Yeah, that's the one. What was the security key? Uh, remember. 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 Oh, yeah. Remember. So, so what was that? You just said TTT something. Did you say 2012? 2012. That's a My, yeah, my, the internet's not working for me in here either. So, um, I guess if I don't have your email address, if you want to write your email address down, and I can email you a full list of websites, because um, they've been they've been popping up more as this kind of gets more more accreditation. This is really kind of the first stuff to come out about it. Um, but uh, there's um, a couple labor organizations. Um, I don't. I really wish I could remember. I talked to the woman, her name's Lori Wallach, who gave me a lot of this information. I can't remember off the top of the head the name. But it's some kind of labor watch organization that's really started, um, that was out of Dallas. Uh, that really, you know, because the negotiations were there, that kind of started it. Um, they started the TPP 2012 website, so I don't know if they know it's going to work here, but if you want to check that out, then you can find more information. The Longshoremen are a pretty active mm -hmm. union and uh, some machinists, I think. Okay. You said, could someone it, give me a piece of paper so we could give yeah, make a list? Yeah, why don't we make a, a sheet, a sign-up sheet? Do you have uh, a so blank piece? Oh. Instead of people so trying to copy it down. Yeah, we, I can see if we can like have a, an event facilitated there. And okay. we could just get a lot of... Um, Great, yeah. Like, uh, like, get a lot of promotion and get some media there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and people just come, and it's a free event. People mm -hmm. just trade whatever music they want. And uh, then you can uh, you can go up and speak about the, the right. <laughs> yeah, we can even yeah. get some maybe local musicians who are. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of local musicians that do, they, they do they do shows, but they don't like selling their music. So yeah. maybe we could even get them to like kind yeah. of endorse that idea of free sharing of music. Yeah, sure. They could they could give out their CDs. Yeah, right. so yeah, that's a really a, good idea. A good start. Um, maybe we could see if we can get some dates, more specifics, and work toward it. I just don't understand why people want to share other people's music. I mean, like if you, mm -hmm. if I say here's my CD that I made mm -hmm. and I worked really hard on making it, and you, I'm going to sell it to you or give it to you. And if I say, you know, please share it, you know, like the Grateful Dead used to do, mm -hmm. share it, yeah, spread right. it around, mm -hmm. you know. But like, you should feel justified. Like I deserve to be able to copy this thing <coughs> because people like make their living off that. So I just, I don't personally get behind it. Oh, like, I do. Well, even the, oh, go ahead. Well, I I feel like uh, John, the corporations that these now. people have contracts chance. with get a good yeah. share of um, what uh, of the money. Yeah. If I yeah, if I can. could give like two dollars yeah, for every CD I want Washington to the people who actually make it, you know, that would that would be fine if I could pay them. But when, it, when the musicians or the producers, but not not these corporations <laughs> that take a. a Decent chunk out of it. And also, the audio well, technician. Also, and also, musicians end up in well, debt. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I know a lot about that. Right? So, oh, okay. that's a longer conversation yeah. than we can have like here, probably. But well, that's I just, right. Can I say something about intellectual that's property right. rights? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay for our country to have intellectual property rights, but when we were first started, we didn't respect. Mm. Britain's intellectual property rights. Right. And most countries that are new, China doesn't respect our right a, a, but we're trying to get them up as they're getting up to speed but when you're a, a, a like some dirt poor country like Haiti I don't blame them for stealing any kind of medication they can get mm -hmm. but that's just but I, I I agree with you like people should be paid for their mm -hmm. yeah, for their songs for their medicine but um it's what he's talking about which I don't like it's like corporations 
overriding our legal, our, our, our government. Mm -hmm. That's, that's and the issue. Also a right to privacy, like, mm. th there's ways to tag files so that you can tell if there's a copyright on them. And you can mm -hmm. scan just for those files. But to say that you have the ability to monitor all internet activity yes. of all people yeah. who are under your service is, is just kind of a workaround. It's really, it's really not, I mean, it is in a certain way about that, but they could very easily regulate copyrights without monitoring everything that everybody does, <laughs> without the ability to look at your emails. Right. I mean, obviously people do email stuff and back and forth, but really, honestly, if you just monitor torrent files, then you could eliminate um, the majority of um, file sharing online or peer-to-peer -peer connections. But you should monitor them through the servers. If you really do want to regulate the internet, you should monitor them of the servers of the peer-to-peer -peer sites that are used to sharing, not just monitoring everybody's things, including their emails. So total information, John. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, I'm, thinking I'm, thinking about, I'm thinking Tim. about bringing it up in the GA, like on Monday, yeah. um, <laughs> if we can have like a working group to uh, to to, um, to create this. This yeah. Event. yeah. What about great. what about the thing Zaney's talking about? Uh, oh, the anti-warp tour. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that should be a good place to do it too. Well, the infringement. I, I think it should be something yeah. separate from the infringement festival. So. And I think that we should get some people who are willing to whatever other events we're doing to discuss this because you know there's pretty much whatever we're going to do this is somehow related. Um, so maybe if for now we could just agree to personally try to discuss this, and I'll get more of these flyers, and I think there's some. Probably there'll be more information coming about it as it goes along, but to share that at whatever we're already doing. I want to point out that Happy Birthday has been copywritten written by Walt Disney. If you sing that someplace where Walt Disney hears you, they're going to charge you for using mm -hmm. it. It's a small world. That's why they don't have happy. <laughs> If you see somebody on the TV or uh, movies playing hap uh, having a happy bir a birthday party, they're not going to play that song because Walt Disney is going to charge them. And Walt Disney has also uh, copywritten Winnie the Pooh, which was invented like a hundred years ago. You know, I mean, they keep extending the copyrights so that, you know, it, I think when copyrights were started in this country, they were like 10 years or 20 years. You know, like basically as long as somebody could live. Depends on the kind of product. You know? Well, I mean, uh, well, what's his name? Ben Franklin did not, did not, did uh, not, copyright anything he made because he wanted to share it but they did have the ability to copyright but not not forever but now they keep extending it mm -hmm. so that nobody can can piggyback on anything that's already been created so I just wanted people to know that I was gonna say I, I don't know is when you do something on Facebook when you mm -hmm. post something don't they own that yeah okay Facebook so does, yeah. If, if Facebook has the ability <laughs> to do this Eventually, everything on the internet will be copywritten, and then <laughs> anything Truth that's not. Is. Well, what yeah, happens to was... information that's not? They're controlling what information we're going to have access to. They're getting rid of books. They're no, yeah, getting no. rid of CDs, DVDs. Everything's computerized. Right. We're not going to have you access get a to anything. Drum. And a maraca, and yeah. get your friends together, okay. and you make well, your I'll own do music. That, but that's what I'm right. saying is, Sing, and you write songs, and forget all that we're nonsense. Going back and we to make our time. own culture. I that's mean, it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm serious about it's that. Well, I, I totally agree Very with making serious. our own culture, but I think that to me it's about everybody. Like, sure, we can make our own culture. We can move into the woods, but I mean, I we shouldn't have to. You know what I mean? We do make our own culture, so copyright's more about whether we have to keep it or not. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And who gets to own the copyright too, whether it be on like more of a micro level, which it should be. There's a case where Twitter actually defended um, yeah. members of Occupy Wall Street mm -hmm. right. and their right to privacy yeah. because they were asked, even though they have the copyrights, to direct messages between Occupy Twitter Wall Street and the Twitter those account. Copyrights? Yeah. Well, Twitter so owns everything like you everything you tweet, everything you put on Facebook. They own. So they actually defended the rights of people in Occupy yeah. Wall Street because most of these marches are organized on Twitter through hashtags. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they defended the rights of Occupy Wall Street protesters yeah. right. in court in, um, in the city of New York they um, because they would not give up um, the messages for the accounts, which they easily could do. And what really highlights is the fact that you know anything that's on your phone, anything... Mm -hmm. would also destroy their business model. I mean, people are using it, and then that would well, say, don't use it because we're going to well, sell you out. But right. Facebook has not destroyed their business model by not right. being Facebook that gives way. It up. They Immediately. Give up. They give up everything. And they actually, um, 
one of the things they were talking about with the uh, the Global Hop drones that were purchased in NATO is that they could be integrated with like Facebook to where you are on Facebook. <laughs> so like if you if you if like because you know how Facebook post a status says, message and you like, get shot. somewhere near like Buffalo. Guys. So if you're doing Foursquare and all that stuff and you say and it says oh you know Heron Simmons posted somewhere near Buffalo then when you know if there's a profile on Heron Simmons then yeah. the drone knows where you're at. Not that imagine, not that it's any. Imagine I get possible. killed. Uh, excuse me. Let me put the what I act like. Imagine you get killed <laughs> because I said I was going to come to your talk right. and I didn't show up. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> right. That would be a good way what? to commit like murder. Because that happens all the time, right? Yeah, on Facebook, people the have an event. They oh, say yeah. they're going to be somewhere. They don't they don't yeah. Yeah. I didn't show up last night. To we tried. That mm -hmm. I was going to go to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta go. Um, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next week is um, liberation. Uh, <laughs> development is liberation. Oh, I can't come. This um, week. It's an old talk. Um, hope to see you. Some of you. And uh, the week after that, we it's environmental justice. We're back in Niagara Square. Okay. Um, in the square, huh? Um, the rain. There's an, an amendment <laughs> made uh, next year. Jones. is going to be at the uh, at the Juneteenth festival, and then after that. Um, <laughs> oh right, <laughs> right, right. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Juneteenth. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the Saturday after that will be at Bidwell. So I'm not sure. No, I think on the 23rd on the calendar it's listed as Niagara Square. Well, yeah, this was just made today. Um, no. I don't know if I, we're still having the GA after that at Bidwell or... I, don't know. I, think, I think next week is, is uh, the uh, June Juneteenth. Right. Yeah. That's as far as I got. Square. I didn't get to we'll anything. It says Niagara Square. Okay. Square. On camera. Right. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like Bidwell.